It's October 2019, and across the UK, more than 400,000 students have just started their final year at university. In this series of four short films, we're following the fortunes of six finalists as they prepare for life after graduation in 2020. Graduate employment is at its highest level for 12 years, and for the class of 2020, there are a record number of graduate vacancies on offer from the country's top employers. We're heading to the West Country and the city of Bristol to meet our first final year student who'll be graduating in the summer of 2020. Robert Porter is studying for a history degree at the University of Bristol and has already begun applying to employers for a graduate job. So the kind of jobs and sectors that I'm looking at, um, the first category is kind of broadly like public sector. So I've looked at uh, the civil service file stream, uh, a couple of direct entry routes into the foreign office, um, uh, as well as the National Crime Agency as a kind of trainee intelligence officer. Um, and then secondly, I'm looking at kind of the private sector, looking at uh, kind of lobbying and communication firms. So that's the plan, but Robert hasn't had a great start with his first application. Civil service fast stream to me was really attractive um, because it provides a kind of direct entry route into the diplomatic stream. So I applied uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and I took the, uh, the tests online and unfortunately I didn't pass them. Um, but you know, there's always, there was always next time. Undeterred, Robert is applying instead for a role at one of the world's best known telecommunications companies. I've applied for the, uh, the Vodafone's uh, kind of government relations lobbying uh, graduate scheme. Um, so for me that's a really good opportunity because I'm really really interested in politics. Um, I've kind of done a couple of work, work experience things with MPs uh, and so I'm really quite keen to have a job where I can kind of do you know politics as an interest um, and so in that kind of position you'd be obviously the, essentially advocating for Vodafone to kind of policy makers and regulators and kind of advancing their position. Um, that's something that's always really interested me. I originally put in a kind of online application and uh, I got invited to do a video interview and these sort of like online tests, but they were a little bit more like kind of games. Um, you know, you had to kind of pick numbers in the order that they kind of occurred and then add them up. Um, I really enjoyed that. I think there's the, there's the, there's the element of competition in it. Um, I mean, normally when you do these sort of online forms and it, you, you pick one or four answers, it, it feels you're very conscious as you're doing it that you're doing an application form. And you know, I'm sure when people make them, they think that it's not that bad, but actually when you're having to do eight of them, and I, rec I get to the point where I begin to recognise the same tests, it gets a bit boring. Um, whereas the thing about Vodafone was it, was, it felt very, um, A, it felt very different, it was quite user-friendly, um, and it felt like you were in kind of competition with something. Um, so yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. We're traveling 200 miles north to Lancaster in the northwest of England to see our second finalist from the class of 2020. Eleanor Manalay is a computer science student at Lancaster University. She grew up in Romania and came to the UK to study for her degree. Eleanor is looking for a graduate job in technology and was impressed by a recruitment event she went to in her penultimate year. Last year I um, attended this IT is not just for the boys event. Uh, I received an email about it and it was, it was really nice to see that um, companies actually think of uh, the females that are in this domain and um, the minority. Uh, and uh, I did attend this event, it was in London. And it was a whole day where, where you would um, meet uh, current uh, employees and uh, how it actually is to apply. It was very empowering to hear um, a woman that is working, that, that is the head of the um, uh, digital department at IBM, uh, how she is handling with being the minority, so a female um, in, in mostly a male populated job. It was, it was really nice because this event also focuses on what companies also want to equalize this uh, balance of male-female on the domain and uh, what companies are doing this. From this event I learned what companies are very inclusive with females and uh, I actually did apply for this um, when I started my applications for, as a graduate software engineer. Uh, and I did consider these uh, companies as um, I thought that being part of this community of um, including females in the computer science uh, domain 
uh, was really nice and empowering. Since the start of her final year, Ellen has stepped up her job hunting. I have went to a careers fair, uh, which happened on campus, and uh, I remember that BBC stood out the most out of them, and uh, the first thing that they said was apply right now because you won't have a chance once, once the places are full. Um, so the next day, once I had my CV and cover letters uh, done, uh, the next day I applied for BBC just because I really liked how um, the individual talked about um, life at BBC and how it is to be in a graduate scheme. Uh, and I think that's when I first um, heard the term grad scheme. Um, not a grad job, but a grad scheme where you would actually get four rotations and you would work for um, the same company, different departments. The BBC representative um, came at a software-related uh, careers fair that my faculty uh, hosted. And um, this representative actually told us how it actually is to be a graduate uh, and to be in all these rotations. And uh, he was actually in his third rotation and he was uh, thinking um, of go moving to um, BBC iPlayer uh, on the um, full stack department and um, this was just after he finished the front end and the back end uh, on other two departments uh, of BBC. Um, so it was really nice how you can scale up and how he moved from uh, front and back. And it's time to return south to the centre of London to meet our third final year student. Ben Glass studies philosophy at University College London and started thinking about his career options at the very beginning of his university degree. I went to the Freshers' Fair thinking that I'd just join the football and maybe like musical or some jazz society and then got interested in all the careers societies that are around UCL. Signed up to them all, did nothing about it. Apart from one, I met a really inspiring brand manager at Teach First who convinced me to apply and I ended up doing that in my second year. What attracted me to Teach First uh, initially, especially the role of brand manager, was getting a kind of student facing job, interacting with other students on campus um, is like something that I always enjoy doing and in particular I care about educational equality. So after a successful year as a brand manager, Ben applied for the Teach First graduate program and has been offered a place to teach maths in the autumn of 2020. It's in the balance at the moment whether I would can take my Teach First offer or whether I would choose to do something else. It would have to be a, a very good offer. That would probably be one of the big four that I would be interested in. Um, the kind of aim there or the, the thinking there is that I would get the skills from consulting or whatever and apply them to education in the f near future. So that would be within five years, I think. So obviously the two have the same kind of end point, um, which like, path I go down first is up for debate. As a humanities student, Ben hasn't found navigating the graduate job market straightforward. I really enjoy my subject philosophy, however it leaves you at a slight competitive disadvantage when you're searching for a job because a lot of the um, graduate opportunities that are offered are either explicitly for STEM stu students or they um, rely on you having strong mental math skills which might be the case, I did IB maths and I haven't offered to teach maths but right now my math skills are a little bit rusty and probably wouldn't I would, probably wouldn't pass many of the maths tests. We're swapping London for the Cathedral City of York to speak to our fourth finalist from the class of 2020. Chantelle Jeffers Bobo is studying social policy at the University of York and is still working out what she'd like to do after university. So I'm a person that pretty much likes to try everything. So I try like shadowing a doctor because at one point I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a lawyer, so I did some shadowing in law and then obviously did some shadowing at the NHS because I thought all oh, GP would be quite cool um, and then obviously just you know working as a teacher so I did loads of work experience with children and I still work with children today but it's more of like a job I enjoy doing rather than a future career. Chantelle has already made job applications to a good selection of well-known graduate employers. I've just recently started my application for Laws of London so I 
So you, I've sent my CV in, did my situational test, and today I'll do my Verify G, which is like a new thing you have to do. So that I'm doing today, and I've got my, I've done Black Black Rock, so I've done my video interviews. Um, I've done Gist. I'm trying to think of the names of it. I've done I've done quite a few. It just they end up m blurring together that you don't really think. I've done a civil um, service, UK Parliament. I'm working on my application for Hiscox. There's so many applications and some they still haven't opened the ones I'm looking at, so like AIG, I'm still waiting for them to open. Chantel knows exactly what she's looking for from her first employer. My biggest thing is inclusion and diversity. And I say inclusion and diversity first, not diversity and inclusion, because I believe in order to have diversity, you need to be inclusive for everyone. And that's what I've learned over the summer, that if you want diversity, if you want people from the BAME network, people that are dis disabled, you have to t make them known that you are inclusive. So if I feel they are inclusive first and then diversity follows, then I will go research them more. It takes a lot for me to ignore that because I'm a BAME woman, I do have a disability and I've grown up with a deaf uh, mother so that's so important for me to feel included because I've seen my mum go through it, I've been through it and that's my number one thing. So how are her applications progressing? No rejections, which is nice, <laughs> um, but no news is good news but it's not really good news because you want to know but they're all in the early stages so some don't consider applications till the deadline some are rolling so it's just like a waiting game so i've done video interviews and i'm still doing testing because they have to they're doing split testing so rather than doing all at once they do one at a time so it then becomes quite tedious because you have to do one and then wait a few days to hear back and then do another and wait a few days to hear back and you just want to do it all at once we've crossed the pennines to the city of liverpool to meet felix kabuti jr He's our fifth final year student and is studying business management at the University of Liverpool. When I was leaving school, um, I was very much focused on pursuing my career as a potential footballer. So um, I actually began playing semi-professionally when I was 15 years old. So whilst I was doing my GCSEs, I was actually playing semi-professional football where I'd train twice a week and also have to play a game at the weekends, sometimes twice in a week. And then when it came to my GCSEs, my parents, um, particularly my dad, sat me down and he said, you're committing a lot of time to your football, which is what I like to see, like you're passionate about it, but at the same time, you can't neglect your studies. So I took a step back from football and I focused on my GCSEs and came out with really good GCSEs. Felix has been very focused on getting work experience alongside his academic studies. For me, before I even came to university, I knew I wanted to secure a placement and that went a long way in my resilience and my perseverance to eventually find one. So I did in excess of 40 to 50 um, applications and I tailored it to more the automotive industry because that was where my interest was in but it wasn't just automotive manufacturers, it was maybe financial services, um, Trans transportation services such as Enterprise or Speedy, um, I mainly tailored it to that. Felix secured a 12-month industrial placement with Mitsubishi Motors and is now hoping to land a graduate job in the automotive industry. Um, I've always had a genuine interest in the industry and also almost like a passion for cars. Um, I feel as if there's always going to be a requirement for cars and as the world develops, cars need to develop as well to suit the needs of the modern day environment. Um, that was coupled with my experience in my industrial placement year at Mitsubishi Motors and now as I finish that I want to explore what other graduate opportunities are available at other um, car manufacturers and also the wider automotive industry. Felix knows it may not be easy to find his dream job. The uncertainty surrounding Brexit and the, and the economy is something that does affect automotive manufacturers here in the UK and that's something I'm factoring into um, I'm taking into account and factoring into my graduate search. So it's almost as if I've um, began looking elsewhere because I'm conscious of that. So that's where I, I began to look into consultancy now. In terms of applications for graduate positions, um, I've done just under five at the moment, um, including the likes of KPMG and Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I hope to do in excess of 30 to 40 applications for a graduate position just to get a wide scope and see what um, opportunities open up to me. To see our final student from the class of 2020, we're off to Birmingham. Louise McKeever-Jones is in the fourth year of her Electrical and Energy Engineering degree at the University of Birmingham. From quite a young age, me and my sister were shown renewables from our dad. 
Um, he'd always point out wind turbines and solar farms to us, so it kind of got us excited and into green energy from when we were quite younger. During her degree, Louise has had two different engineering work placements. The summer of second year into third year, I went up to Glasgow and worked for a small engineering consultancy. Um, and then my last summer, so between third and fourth year, I was with Bechtel, um, who were quite a big EPC, um, doing their summer internship placement. So I found the Bechtel one way more helpful because it's a bigger company, um, very, very well structured internship. Louise is now applying to a range of different engineering employers for a graduate position. I've been looking at ACOM, WSP, Atkins, so some of the big consultancies. Um, and then I've also found some really interesting little companies, so I thought a nice little company would be fun to apply to as well. Louise has already made progress with some of her applications, but she's found the online games that employers use to test students frustrating. So in the game app, you go through different levels. Um, one of them's blowing up balloons, one of them's trying to unlock a door. Um, I find, I don't know, it might be accurate, but it came back that I um, like to create conflict and didn't work well in a team. Uh, last year I led a team of 39 students and gained the highest grade for the master's project. So I just didn't feel that this was entirely accurate. I think it makes you feel like you're more of a number to the company than a student. Louise knows what she wants from her first graduate employer. From my first employer, I'd quite like to gain my chartership. It's obviously a company that will allow me to be accredited by the IET, which is my institute. It's very important. Um, a company where they have uh, travel opportunities. I think it'd be quite interesting to work abroad. There's some amazing projects happening in different countries. Um, for instance, in Peru, there's a lot of wind farms going up. So it'd be amazing to be able to look back and say, oh, that wind farm in Peru, I've played a part in. Having spoken to a lot of people during my work experience, they were saying how interesting it is to work on different projects. Um, they all said if you do a project in you know, this kind of country, you'll be able to do a project anywhere in the world. <laughs>